Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming today. Gosh, I'm loud. Um, I'm so thankful that you came in to get all this information from so many different points of view. What I plan on doing today is to give you two very simple strategies, life hacks, that can exponentially increase the quality of your life instantly, and specifically in the long term. First, I'm going to give you a little bit of context. For the past 17 years, I've worked with chronic pain conditions and developed a fascia-based approach, completely non-invasive approach, for the treatment of chronic pain conditions. Chronic pain emanating from orthopedic issues, neurological, and even some of the more esoteric termed idiopathic conditions. That method, I'm actually not completely going to speak about today. Today, I'm going to tell you something that I believe is the key to the success of the people that I've worked with, that I've had the privilege to work with. And there is literally living proof in this room of what people are capable when they say, I will, not I'm going to try. Okay? I'm going to give even just a few examples because these examples are important to give. They defy current medical literature. And they're in this room. This is actual living proof. One person that had severe spinal stenosis, right? We just heard about that, okay? And had such severe stenosis that there were symptoms all the way down the leg, lovingly referred to as sciatica. And so severe that there was actually drop foot, which is a very friendly sounding term for paralysis of the foot. The nerves from the spine, based on what Dr. Rob was saying, we're no longer conducting electricity properly down there, and that person literally lost the capacity to use their foot. They're sitting here today. Seven years later, they do not suffer from any of this. They have full strength, full mobility in their foot, and do not suffer from their symptoms, as long as they do their stuff, okay? As they continue to do their stuff. So, not supposed to be possible, right in this room. One other example, I have four people in this room that have the MRI that shows their knees are bone on bone. No more cartilage. Done. All of them, and some, their knees were locked like this, couldn't lengthen it or bend it, so much so that they actually had to be driven over. Well, they're driving themselves over now for tune-ups. They're walking daily. Most of these people are hiking daily. In case you're wondering if they're 22, all of them, the youngest one is 60 plus. The rest are 60, 70, and 80, okay? So if anyone tells you this is it, no, don't believe them. So let me share with you the key, what I think is the key to their success that has actually nothing to do with the magical therapy work, okay? So first I'm gonna ask you a question. I hope people started squirming a little bit. Good, <laughs> good. So the question is, does anybody in this room think that someone can sit like this for hours on end? Yeah, I see some people shaking their heads. That's right. <laughs> for hours on end, continue to sit like this for hours on end and not have possibly various sources of chronic pain. Pick a joint, okay? Now I'm gonna ask you a slightly more complicated question, slightly different, right? Let's just toggle between those two, gorgeous, okay? So do you think someone can sit for hours on end and continue to do so, like the previous slide and like this one, come see me, who I don't know, like five times per week, no one does, no one could stand me that much, okay? Um, see the entire panel of experts, go see physical therapist, massage therapist, acupuncturist, even their orthopedic surgeon, but continue to sit like that and expect to really get better, stay better, and not have chronic pain? I'm here to tell you the good news is no, that's not possible. Why is that good news? Because what you can do really, really matters. And what these people that have these miraculous, magical results are doing, they changed their lifestyle. And I'm gonna give you two simple solutions, strategies that you can start today. Americans sit on average 13 hours per day. 
Now, I love that Dr. Rob was right before me because when we sit, we have various forms of spine flexion. Right? Past five minutes, we all start to kind of... <laughs> or depending on your variation, right? I chose those two variations. So I'm going to change that for the Americans, at least in this room. We're going to start to shift the statistic. I guess we will bring the average probably to like, you know, 12.5, okay? <laughs> With our power, okay? So let's combat the sitting disease, okay? I'm going to give you life hack number one, strategy number one, and it's probably not that revolutionary. And you've probably heard this, or if you haven't, you're like, ah, that makes sense, yeah? Well, I'm not going to ask you to just agree with me. I'm going to ask you for an I will. I'm going to ask you for an action step. I'm going to ask you to set a timer. So use technology if you want to. Use your smart watch, use your smartphone, use your laptop. Um, I have a client whose assistant walks into the room every 20 to 30 minutes and signals him or tells him to stand up. And that one is one of my favorites because she stood up too, so that's two for one, so we're knocking down that average. <laughs> Bottom line, I give that example because it's like, get creative, make it work. Google Calendar, it'll let you set recurring, right? Just take the work out of it. Do a little bit of work, and I want you to do it today. I will today, okay? Now, before I give you the next life hack, I love this one. It's so simple, yes? By the way, do this for a week. Let me know if that chronic neck tension that you're always suffering from, it's like, if it's a good amount better, how about in three weeks? Maybe it's gone. You go to the gym, and you feel your back for the first, you know, five minutes on the treadmill. You do that. Maybe that's not aging. Maybe it's just how you're using your body, yeah? So here's my next question. How many times in a year do you think you get in and out of a chair? <sighs> okay, best image ever for that, good? So fair to say that's a high numeral, right? And what if every time you get in and out of a chair, you are doing it biomechanically wrong. I really like that Dr. Rob was before me, okay? Biomechanically wrong and going into some serious spine flexion, and every time that you are getting in and out of a chair, you're actually injuring yourself a bit. Do you know what's the most common story I hear? People come to me with back pain. That is, like, so common, unfortunately, right? How did it happen? I don't know. I just got up one day. I got off the plane. I sneezed. I picked up the glass of orange juice. Can you see the flexion, by the way? Okay. Um, lifted the toilet lid. Like, that one's really not fun. Okay. So, it, was it really the glass of orange juice? Was it just getting... No, it was repetitive actions, seemingly inconsequential, that have accumulated over time. Again, that's actually the good news, because today, I'm going to teach you how to do this properly. And every time you get in and out of a chair, you're actually going to strengthen yourself like what Amanda was saying, and do a proper squat. So you're actually going to get stronger and not injured -er. I'm sure that's a word, okay? <laughs> so we have come up with a really helpful acronym. So life hack number two is I'm going to teach you all how to properly get in and out of a chair. And for those who know me, you can see this coming. I'm going to make everybody do it, okay? <laughs> Action steps, right? So help, and I'm going to break it down step by step and teach it is hands, eyes, lean, and push. So we're gonna start with number one. My prop, good. So every time we get in out of a chair, this is what I see a heck of a lot of, and it's really interesting because until I bring this up to people, they're completely unconscious of doing this. We'll often, if we've been sitting for a while, we'll put our hands on the chair, yeah, those of you who are aware of it, we'll push up. First thing in the morning when we get out of bed, whoop, we're going to use our hands. Now, can you already see what my spine is doing here? Now, not only is that going to automatically put me into spine flexion, stenosing, is that a verb? Okay, my spine. Um, but also, when it comes to vectors, guess what? If I have my hands here, as I go to load my spine, the vector of force of gravity will go through my lumbar spine and or sacrum. Again, and again, and again, and again, until I sneeze one day, right? My back goes out. 
So, simple, simple solution. From now on, please have your hands on your thighs. This is really good because guess what? I can get that support after, you know, I've been sitting there for a little bit. I can also push up a little bit. But by putting my hands here, I actually, as I load my spine, am far less likely to do this. But also, the vector of force will now travel in front of my spine and not through me. Okay? So, E is for eyes, eyes up. Now, we've all been told a lot by Dr. Ra, but we've all heard this even before. It's like common knowledge. Don't ever lift anything heavy like this, right? Why? Well, because you're going to injure yourself. Okay, so I'm not going to be lifting a heavy box or a TV or something. Well, these days I don't weigh much, but that, I just dated myself. Um, <laughs> but what if you're lifting yourself again and again and again and again and again that way? And habit number two that I see, along with putting the hands here, which also creates it, there's this tendency to just look down. Can you see? Just watch my spine. It's just how we're designed. If my head goes down, my spine will follow. This is cervical spine. This is a spine. These are just areas in the spine. I take my cervical spine down, boom, flexion. So very simple. Once my hands are here, I'm just going to lift my eyes up and chest up. And I'm going to keep looking up, because this is sometimes what I'll see. This, and the person will stand. There you go, which I'll make sure you, none of you are doing. I'm watching you, okay? So that is very simple strategy. Then it's important not to, great, Dana, I'm all set up, and I'm going to try to, whoop, right, go straight up. I should not do that too many times in a row, okay? If I try to go straight up, first of all, I put myself at fall, uh, risk of falling backwards, which sounds like a bad idea. But also, now the vector of force of gravity is going down through my entire spine, and that's not a good idea. So once we've got our hands and our eyes and chest up, we're going to hinge from the hips lean. Now notice, I did not do this. So we've got to have those two steps to keep that support in the eyes up and then lean. And then we've got step, the last one, is really simple, just push. Okay? And it's a lot easier actually when you do it smoothly, not break it down like that, when we will actually do this together. Okay? So I'm going to demonstrate one more time, and then we're going to do it. So from here, hands, eyes, lean. So not yet, everybody. Good. And push. That'll be what we're going to do. I know. I'd miss that. Hey, this is great. We just interrupted sitting again. OK, sorry. <laughs> Things you think of later. All right. So what we're going to do now, and those of you who just got up, you just got bonus points, OK? We're going to interrupt sitting, because we've been sitting for about 20-some minutes. Okay? And we're going to do it the right way. Now, disclaimer, if anything's really hurting right now in your knees, your hips, and your back, if this is hurting, don't do it. Come see one of us so we can get you back to doing it biomechanically right. I don't know if that's good grammar, but I'm taking it. So from here, everybody scoot to the front edge of your chair for me. So don't do it from, like, back here. Okay? We don't want that. Good. Then your feet, you don't want them far away. That creates a longer lever with more force into your spine. So just comfortably underneath you, about hip width apart. Then hands on your thighs. Use your hands and get those eyes up and chest up. Now I want you to pick a point on the screen because I cannot tell you how automatic it is going to be to look down. Okay? So pick a point, don't stop, and then shift the weight, lean and push to stand. Woohoo! All right, action steps. Good. So, to recap, you can sit, you can stand, whatever. What you do matters. What you do a lot, again and again and again, really, really matters. You go somewhere to an orthopedic surgeon, and you're like, oh my god, my back is so much better, I'm sitting right. Right? Yeah. It's living evidence in this room. Form follows function which is extremely good news because you can change the way you function. If you function differently, your form will change. There are people in here that used to suffer from chronic migraines. I, five years ago was the last time, if, if not more. Doesn't exist anymore. People who live with chronic years of plantar fasciitis. What plantar fasciitis? Okay, doesn't exist anymore. It's amazing what can be helped by learning to do things better. I love how people are like sitting straighter right now. This is awesome. So change your form. Change your life. Someone tells you you can't, 
please don't believe them. It's amazing how much power you have when you will do. Okay? Thank you so much.